So I had an idea on how aircraft carriers could function in game. First off, it needs to be reasonable. Aircraft carriers, not every nation had a great deal of them. Their role in game would more likely be a support class, and of the trees that did use them, this would only be one line. So we can't invent a whole new system and way to play, new UI and everything for such a minority of ships. Another thing that needs to be taken into account is that aircraft carriers were warships. They had guns, and they're not the only ships to carry aircraft. Cruisers commonly had some scout planes they could take with them, and obviously a cruiser needs to function like, like the rest of the boats. So the controls for the aircraft here have to be the same, just built upon the already existing controls. Anyways, enough of that. Let's get to the idea. So it focuses around the concept of jumping from your carrier to a squad of planes, to a squad of bombers, and being able to jump to and fro from all of those. How you do this is rather simple. Like with changing ammo, there would be a little section on the bottom of the screen aligned to your keys, whatever lens you happen to put there, allowing you to press each button. What would the buttons do? Assuming you would attach them to the number keys, although you could obviously change these. While controlling your carrier, one and two would send out a squad of planes or bombers. Historically, carriers could load a lot of fighters and bombers and could send out a whole lot at a time. But I think for game's sake and being able to control everything, you should only be able to send out about one squad of each at a time. I think a squad could take around six planes. And when one squad dies, or if your squad loses some planes, you can send out more. At max, you can only send out a total of like 36 planes or whatever historically the carrier could carry. But three would be direct planes, which would bring up like the artillery map for tanks, and you'd click down and your squad of planes would just fly to that direction of the map. The map wouldn't tell you about any known enemy locations or anything like that. It's not like some secret artillery map like you have on World of Tanks. It's just a map of the plane zone. Planes would make a beeline directly to wherever you told them to go. Perhaps in the future you could have it set up so you could like give them multiple points to go around or have more complicated controls, but in the future. The idea is, as I was saying, it has to be simple. Having Gaijin develop and create a whole new AI for, once again, one class of ship that not every nation would make great use of is unreasonable, so we have to keep it reasonable. Ergo, the AI needs to function off what we know it can already do. Now, I don't know if it can take commands, but I know it can fly in a straight line. Four and five would be callback planes, uh, one for each, bombers and fighters, and the squad would make a beeline directly back to your carrier. So if that happens to be flying over enemy destroyers that easily take out a squad of fighters then so be it you have to think the AI is just there to fill in tasks you're supposed to be one the one making all the smart decisions now this is where things get interesting six and seven would be assuming direct control where you leave control from the carrier and jump to the planes either fighters or bombers and while you're controlling weather squad your ship will defend itself but will not move unless it's told so now while controlling the fighter or bomber. The layout is similar. Essentially, one, two is to switch to the bombers or go back to your carrier. Four and five would be direct bombers slash carrier. It was the same as directing planes when you're in the carrier. It pulls up a little map. You click on where your map where you want the thing to go. Six would be land bombers. Tell your bomber squad to go back to the carrier. For bombers, it'd be the same, which is fighters. Seven and eight would be spawn more fighters or bombers. For when your squad has lost certain planes from doing whatever, press that button and new planes will take off from your carrier and make a beeline directly to wherever your squad is. Once again, you have to think, not the AI. The AI is just there to keep the planes in the air and the carrier safe. When you're not controlling your units, the AI will have some simple behaviors. For carriers, they'll not move unless told so. They'll fire upon enemies when they are in a certain range, as the carrier has its guns of its own, and probably some pretty good ones, comparable to certain destroyer loadouts. For bombers, after they complete the move order, if there's anything nearby to bomb, they will bomb that directly. I'm a bit on the fence about this, because it could be irritating or annoying to have the just bomb whatever happens to be floating by. But I'm also keeping the, the idea uh, simplistic and more of convenient. You would assume that there would be a ship over there or maybe a base if there was bases to bomb. And so instead of having to jump to your bombers and then bomb it yourself, you could just have the AI do that. And I'm pretty sure the AI is capable of attempting to bomb a ship. When there is nothing to bomb nearby, they'll just fly in a circle whatever altitude that they're at. I'm thinking for a regular altitude, they'd climb to about like 2,000 meters. 
fighters is a bit more complicated. They will encounter any enemy plane, even if encountered during a move order. If they are idle around a bomber squad, they will assist that bomber squad, basically just follow them. And if fighters go near that bomber squad, they will engage the fighters. It's also possible that maybe you could have them be assist the bombers and doing bombing runs. When there's nothing around, they'll just fly in a circle, much like bombers. If anything happens to the units you are not controlling, there will be an action report right above the kill list thing of your units exactly what's going on, i.e. the bombers are being attacked by a destroyer, enemy spotted near your carrier, enemy fighter near your scout, your carrier is under attack. Overall this is really simple basic stuff. I want it to be basic because it needs to be realistic for Gaijin and also you have to keep in mind that new players, if you throw this all this information at them, they're not going to want to play. There would still be non-carrier player controlled aircraft that would spawn in the same way that they currently do with Bond Point. However, the difference is they wouldn't get a squad to follow them around. Though the bonus above having one of these is that being player controlled, you are smarter than the AI. The AI is kind of dumb, so if you do engage it, even an incompetent pilot can deal with some AI. Also, typically land-based aircraft are better than the able ones. That's a matter of circumstance being able to take off longer runways. And individual player spawned aircraft would be able to land on player controlled aircraft carriers if they're good enough. A few other ideas that have crossed my mind was for the nations that didn't rely too much on carriers, i.e. Germany, Italy, Russia, they did have some aircraft carriers and an extensive use of seaplane tenders. While they wouldn't equal up to the high-ranking British, American, and Japanese aircraft carriers, they would still give players who enjoy those nations the opportunity to play the carrier gameplay. A few issues I have with my own suggestion is one that it has an issue while controlling the carrier. You would have to have a large amount of buttons on screen to also notify which ammo you are using at the time. And also have the aircraft carrier controls. A few ideas I had to get around this were to maybe have a button where you could switch between regular controls and aircraft carrier controls, but that might be too complicated. You could have just a large amount of things on the screen at once. And also thinking to reduce the amount you have is for your main guns, instead of having a single button for each type of ammo, since Navy am naval ammo is rather slim, it's possible you could have just press the same button and it'd scroll through it. Another I have is that I said earlier, I'm not sure if the AI knows how to take commands. The AI, if you've ever played any of the single player missions or whatever, you'll know that they are very dumb. They do know how to follow the player. There is a system in game, the player controlled aircraft dies, you automatically switch to another plane in that squad, or at least I'm pretty sure. So that those are covered, but the AI, it's still, it's really dumb. And as a final uh, note, add Zeppelins to the game, this would be awesome. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you did not like the video, hit the dislike button. If you want to see more, this is a random video that I've made in the week. Normally I make news videos on the weekends, so hit the subscribe button if you want to see those. If you want to be notified whenever I do upload a video, hit that bell icon. And thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.